nature lovers, Bob Ellis here again with another episode of Notes from the Field. And today we're out here at the Walnut Creek Center for Education and Research, which is in the Mugion Highlands, kind of the northern edge of the Mugion Highlands. And we're trying to answer a question that I have been getting very often recently, and that is, Bob, why are my allergies so bad right now? Well, the short answer to that is sex, 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 plant sex. So this story of plant sex and the resulting allergens for humans begins about 125 million years ago in the lower Cretaceous when basically insects invented flowers. This relationship has developed into one of the most prominent relationships in terrestrial ecology, and the mutualism has shaped endless biotic communities. And so insects as pollinators is called entomophily. And that is the plesiomorphic condition, which means that that was the first type of pollination that existed. And all other pollination systems have grown out of that. So the reason that this is important in this story is because these plants, this lupin, is insect pollinated. You could look at the flower and tell that it has been, it has evolved characteristics. Oh, there's a pollinator right there. It kind of enhances this mutualism between the pollinator and the plant. However, there's a completely other, and as a matter of fact, there's two other pollination systems that figure much more prominently in the story of allergens than the story, this story, the entomophily. The other major pollination system is wind pollination, anemophily. And anemophily evolved out of entomophily. And so some of the characteristics of an insect pollinated flower, you can see that in order for this plant to have its pollen shared with another plant, and there's the pollen right there, that an organism has to, ooh, look at all that pollen, has to peel back these petals to gain access to nectaries, and that's where the nectar is, the prize that the, the uh, pollinator is looking for. It has to brush past this anther, which is part of the male flower part, collectively called the stamen, has to push past that, and it collects this pollen that's on its back or its abdomen, depending on the insect, and then flies away and shares and will visit another plant. And the result is sexual reproduction. There's, sexual reproduction is selected for because it confers a big advantage to these plants. The big advantage of sexual reproduction is an increase in genetic diversity. And an increase genetic diversity is advantageous because environmental conditions change. So here's the sad part of the story, or at least the part of the story where humans become upset. And this happened probably 100 million years ago or so, whenever the continents started moving into temperate zone. Plants invented, once again, another type of pollination and this top pollination is wind pollination. And the big advantages to wind pollination is you don't need a pollinator. You don't need an accomplice. And so therefore, you don't have to invest a lot of energy into producing nectar the, to entice the pollinator to come in or those big showy flowers. As a matter of fact, let's look at this oak. These are oak flowers. I mean, you wouldn't even notice these flowers However, it's pretty clear they're loaded with pollen. So the strategy for wind pollinated plants is to invest in a whole lot of pollen rather than those really showy kind of flowers and nectar and just throw 
tons and tons of pollen into the air, into the winds, the prevailing westerlies at this latitude. And pollen can travel as far as 1,800 miles. So just with some strong winds and high production of these pollen grains, these plants are able to spread their genes across a very, very wide landscape. And so it's only like 10 to 18 percent, depending on how you kind of describe the plant, that 10 to 18 percent of plants are wind pollinated. However, the families that they are in are ubiquitous. For example, grasses, Poaceae, that family, almost all of those, all grasses are wind pollinated. Oaks, almost all oaks, Fagaceae, wind pollinated. Um, cottonwoods, wind pollinated. Um, not all plants in that family are wind pollinated, but all of um, the junipers, wind pollinated. And pines, wind pollinated. So this time of the year, plants are anxious to get the, those male gametophytes, the pollen, out in the air so that they can take advantage of the winds that we typically kind of encounter in the spring. So I'm going to guess that there are some among you, some folks who might question this binary system of insect pollinated or animal pollinated versus wind pollinated. You might be thinking, well, Bob, never in nature is there an either or. Might there be some plant families that do both? And believe it or not, there are. And that kind of system is called ambophily. And so there are two families where we find ambophily. The grass family, Poaceae, and in the sedge family, Cyperaceae. So there's some cases where we have sedges or grasses that produce flowers that typically are wind pollinated sort of flowers that have colorful flower parts and also produce nectar, and in some cases, scents. And once again, the scents are able, enable insects to find the nectar. So it is not a binary world. It's more of a continuum when it comes to pollination. However, most pollination is in that world of animal pollination or insect pollination for the most part. However, remember that 10 to 18% of uh, plants do wind pollination. This video has been about the birds and the bees and well, we just happen to have a wild honey beehive in this walnut tree and you can see the honey bees coming and going. And so for 125 million years, honey bees and flowers have this dance that have created a beautiful world and Along with beauty, sometimes comes challenges. And the challenge of allergy? Well, really, it's an outgrowth of beauty. Wind pollination comes from insect pollination. So maybe there's a moral to this story. With the good, sometimes a little bad comes. Thanks for watching this video. We look forward to seeing you next time. Why don't you give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and leave comments down below. Mm -hmm.